We've all been there, walking into a location, not having the slightest bit of clue of where to start. Or you go ahead and set up a bunch of lights and everything just looks like really unnatural and bad. So how are you supposed to know where to set up your lights? So today I wanna to talk about a simple approach that I use when pretty much lighting any scene that I've ever lit before. And hopefully you take this, you learn from it, and you leave today's video a more confident cinematographer. So with this simple approach that I use to light every scene that I light, there's really one really important thing that I'm looking for in every location, and that's motivation. And by motivation, I don't mean like how pumped I am to light a scene. By looking for motivation, what I really am referring to is what are the main sources of light that already exist within the location? Where's the light already coming from naturally before you touch anything? Is it coming from you know, the windows, is it coming from a lamp? Is it coming from overhead lights? Once you're able to determine where that light is already naturally coming from, you're able to now use that as motivation for where you're going to place your lights in order to already enhance the light there that already exists. Now you're going to find that by doing this, by motivating from the natural sources that already exist within the frame and showing those sources, you're going to find that your lighting is going to feel a lot more natural than it did before. So once I determine what that main source is, I make sure that I place that behind my subject because I want that main source backlighting my subject. Backlighting is going to give you shape to your subject, which is going to give you a lot more depth within your image. And if you've seen my video about what makes an image look cinematic, it's taking a two dimensional frame from your video and giving it a three dimensional feel, which is something that you're able to do by giving it depth and backlighting gives you depth. Now for a couple examples, I filmed a couple scenes at this house that my girlfriend Anna is house sitting because I guess people need house sitters, but it's an awesome opportunity for me to use a new space to demonstrate. So. Let's jump into our first scene, which is going to be a daylight interior. And please don't share this video to the people that Anna's house sitting because I don't know if they'd be pumped that I like moved around all their furniture, but shh. Obviously looking at this frame, the main source of light that we have in this location is coming from those windows behind us. And since the main source is the windows, our light is going to be motivated by the daylight coming from that direction. So first things first, the first shot that I like to set up for is the wide shot. So some quick words of wisdom to live by when lighting is seen is that when you get into a location, you want to make sure that you're lighting spaces and not faces. So setting up that wide shot first, you're more likely to light up that space. And then when you need to go in for your tights, you're able to bring in all those lights closer just to sweeten up the tights. So for most wide shots where there's a lot of window light and a lot of natural light coming in from outside, I found that you don't really need to do much to the scene with today's cameras to make that wide shot look nice. So just to bring the levels up on the both of us, I have a light behind me, camera left on the wide shot that is being motivated by the light coming in from that room. The light that I'm using here is the Nanlite Forza 500, which has basically replaced my Aperture 300D. It's a daylight balance, awesome, powerful light that just is really easy to use and gets the job done. On top of the Forza 500, I have this Nanlite dome that is giant and I love how big it is because as you know, the bigger the source, the softer the source. So having that really big light dome attachment is just giving you a really soft source right away. And then the only other things I add to the scene was I walked in some negative fill just to cut away some light that was bouncing onto the shadow sides of our face to keep the image nice and moody and contrasty and then added some haze in the background just to give some volume to the light that was coming through the windows. And boom, there's our wide shot. Now we're gonna move everything in and focus on our tight shots of Anna and I. So in the tight shots, I moved the force of 500 around coming from the direction of the windows to help enhance the light that was coming from the windows. I angled the light just slightly to help wrap that light that's coming from the side of the windows just slightly 
over each of our faces to give us a nice highlight and nice highlight roll off across the face having nice shadows nice contrast nice dimension to the face i then brought the negative fill closer to the shadow sides of our face just to cut out any ambient light that was bouncing around filling in the shadow sides of our face because i wanted to keep the image looking moody put some haze in the background to give the background light some volume and some depth to it and boom we have our daylight interior close-ups as well and I think it looks great it's simple the lights being motivated from the windows and looks natural to me now moving on to a little bit trickier of a lighting situation our nighttime interior shot Now here looking at this right away, we're seeing that the main light source to be motivated from is the lamp in the corner of the room. So the lamp in this scene is what is known as a practical. What practicals are, are lights that you can see within the frame that help motivate the actual film lights off of. So here in the wide shot, it's not as easy as the daylight interior because there's not a lot of light coming in through the windows and everything's pretty much dark to begin with. So with the lamp on, off behind the wall, I have my Aperture 120D Mark II, which is gelled with the CTO, which stands for color temperature orange, to match the same color temperature that is coming from the lamp, so that it looks like it's coming from the lamp. And that off to the side there is helping raise the levels on what's happening inside the room, which is me sitting on a couch. And then because I wanna introduce more depth to the image, out behind the window instead of that falling into black I wanted to introduce some moonlight for moonlight I took my Forza 500 and I skied that up on a c-stand behind the trees I direction that towards the window giving some backlight and some shape to the trees that are outside and giving a little more depth to the outside world and then the cooler contrast between the lamp that's in the room and the color of the moonlight outside is also giving you a nice little bit of color contrast which in the end is giving you more depth in your image and then because i was introducing moonlight coming from the left side of the screen coming through the window in the foreground i'm able to introduce moonlight coming from the left acting as if there's a window to the left even if there wasn't any and by shining a little light onto the foreground giving it a nice blue cool tone to it I'm introducing even more depth to the image and to pull this off I just have a cheap little LED off to the side there that is colored balanced daylight the same as the Forza 500 outside the only other thing I have here is a lamp in the foreground just to give a little more color contrast in the foreground as well so added a bit of haze and then there we go we have our wide shot so then when we moved into my close-up all I did was move that aperture 120d that was gelled with the CTO in closer to me, closer to my face, giving me that nice wrap around my face, really sweetening up the skin and making me look pretty. And then taking the moonlight coming from the window, and I brought that around, direction it straight through the window, just so it was hitting the back of my head to give me that separation, that backlighting from the window, and also putting that, that nice cool color temperature on the back of my head, which contrasted nice with the tungsten light that is hitting my face from the 120D that motivates from the lamp. Then on Anna's close up, even though we're not seeing the lamp, we're still getting the light from that lamp, but it's not actually the lamp. It's being motivated by the lamp, but it's actually, again, the 120D flipped around the shine on Anna's face to help sweeten up her already beautiful face. Then on Anna's close up, you can also see down that hallway and to give the hallway some depth, Again, I'm bringing that motivated daylight that we saw from the wide shot through a window that may or may not be there, but it feels like it's there because we established that there's moonlight coming in from that direction from the shots beforehand. Then just to give a last second extra touch to Anna to help separate her from that background even more and to give her a nice cool color contrast backlighting her, I added motivated moonlight using my Young Nuo light wand that I didn't have a C stand for, so I just held it over top of the back of her head. And yeah, there's our image. So yeah, the idea to the simple approach here is 
you're finding what in your scene already exists lighting wise and you're dropping lights wherever you feel necessary or feel like you need to help motivate that light to enhance that light onto your subject. So obviously lighting's not the easiest thing to figure out, but take the time to figure it out because it's what's going to separate you from all the other amateur cinematographers out there who don't take the time to learn it. So take what, what you have at home, test them out in different lighting situations and learn how to use your lights in pretty much all situations you'd be faced with. Hope this was a helpful video for you. Thanks as always for watching and I love you.